Hey, how's it going? So recently, my wife and I just came back from a mini honeymoon in Perhentian Island in Malaysia. So we booked a pretty nice resort called Alunan Resort. Alunan Resort was a really nice place. It's quite pricey at around 600 ringgit a night. It's definitely a cut above, but it's not quite luxury yet. Nevertheless, we thoroughly enjoyed our vacation. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you how you can get to Perhentian from Kuala Lumpur and our personal review of Alunan Resort. All right, let's get started. Here we are at KUL2 Airport. Uh, mind you that parking was 46 ringgit a day. Round trip Air Asia flights from KL to Kota Baru was 350 ringgit per person, which is higher than average. Once you land in Kota Baru Airport, there's a lot of taxis that will bring you to Kuala Besut Jetty for 78 ringgit. It was cheaper than Grab that quoted me 100 ringgit. We asked our taxi driver to make a quick pit stop at the local nasi dagang restaurant. Nasi dagang is a mixture of normal and sticky rice eaten with local tuna. The taxi ride from Kota Baru Airport to Kuala Besut Jetty without any stops will be about 45 minutes. We paid Alunan Resort for the boat service from Kuala Besut Jetty straight to Alunan Resort. It costs 65 ringgit round trip per person and it takes about 45 minutes one way. And here we arrive at the Alunan Jetty, which is only for Alunan guests. First impression, the customer service is definitely a cut above, especially for Malaysian standards. There's nothing that pisses me off more than dirty public toilets. But it's safe to say that Alunan Resort public toilets are A+. Clean bathroom. We arrived two hours early before check-in time and we went down to the beach and played some frisbee to kill some time. All right, so there's the map of this whole resort. I'm gonna show you which one to choose if you wanna stay here. All right, so the beach is up there. That's the lobby restaurant. And these are all individual units. If you want privacy, I recommend you to get one of these all the way at the end. This is the one that we stayed in. And the reason for that is because if you get one of these, you feel safe in the middle. But then again, everybody will have to use the common corridor and you're gonna hear them walking around your unit, which I personally don't like. So when I'm here, there's literally nobody using this common walkway, which I really like. So the ones with the really good view, in my opinion, is the one that is up on top of the hill, which is this side. I mean, I think all of them have pretty good view, but these would probably have the best view. Check-in time is finally here. Here's what it looks like walking to our hotel room. It's an okay room, nothing to shout about, but the view from the bedroom is amazing. Our unit comes with a pretty big smart TV, but just to let you know, the app that they're using doesn't really work well with iPhones. So if you have an iPhone, you probably can't cast anything to the smart TV, but you can still watch YouTube videos. We got a really nice private balcony with a fan here, but unfortunately uh, it has obstructed views from the trees. So I'm not sure if that's on purpose or they forgot to trim it down. All right, so now let's go check out the rooftop terrace. Every unit will have its own private rooftop, which is pretty cool. Absolutely stunning views from the rooftop terrace. I think we got one of the nicest views here, but unfortunately there's one unit behind us where their bedroom window faces our rooftop terrace which is a little bit weird. Okay, let's recap the pros and cons for my first impression. I just checked in like an hour and a half ago. I'm at the balcony in my room. So pros number one, it's a brand new hotel room. It's really nice. The staff service is really good. It's kind of like what you would expect at a fancy resort. With the price that I'm paying per night, it was around 600 ringgit-ish per night, I think rightfully so. However, I'm at the balcony. The view at the balcony is terrible. It's pointless. 
quite frankly. I don't need to tell them that they need to just trim it off, you know, because the sea is over there. I can't see anything with this tree. So I don't have a nice view from the balcony. Over here, this is our bedroom and our bed is facing this way, but we have a window over there that's facing the sea and the view from our bedroom is unobstructed. So at least we got that. Also, we have like a terrace at the rooftop of each unit. The view from my terrace is also really good. Okay, so now the cons, by the service from the staff being really, really good, I can tell that they are all overwhelmed uh, with the sudden influx of uh, full house bookings. Number two, um, I think using the app to connect the TV and the customer service might be convenient for some people, but could be really annoying for maybe perhaps the older generation. Uh, number three, we're checked in for like an hour and a half. We still haven't got our luggage, so I need to go down after this video to go get my luggage. Number four, there's really no restaurants here whatsoever except for the hotel restaurant. I just looked at the menu and looking at the price, we're talking about the cheapest meal would probably be 35 ringgit pasta or something. So that's pretty steep. I mean, if you're a couple, you're staying here for just a couple of nights, 35 ringgit, maybe you could pull it off. But if you come here with a big family and to feed all that mouse, 35 ringgit per person per meal yeah that could sting you quite badly but then again i think the the people who book this place are well aware that this is an isolated private part of uh, Perhentian. so you need to know and expect this kind of uh, price from, from the food because if you think about it they have the water taxi to bring you to the uh, Pulau Perhentian Prasar it's like 40 ringgit round trip and then you still have to pay a somewhat overpriced meal over there but it's just slightly lower than what it is over here so if you add it up might as well just pay 30 so that's how they get you. Now, despite pricey resort food at the restaurant, it's nice to know that filtered water is free. Here's what to expect when you're walking around at the resort at night. Remember our unit is all the way at the top of the hill, at the very end where nobody's around. So if you're a scaredy cat like me, here's what to expect at night. Lizard is. It's crazy, man. It's as big as those slippers over there. We're on our way for our first dinner, which we have to pay for. Breakfast is included. So here's our first breakfast and they do have proper coffee here for the coffee lovers. It's important. <laughs> the nasi lemak was good. We had it almost every day and today we decided to take the boat taxi to Long Beach. While waiting, we decided to hang around at the private beach where we found this weird looking creature. It's like a seed in there and then this whole thing is just jelly. <laughs> here we are at Long Beach Jetty. Surprisingly, even though there's more population here, the water is clearer and there's more fishes. I recommend you to snorkel around these rocky formations because there's a lot of wildlife around this area. Oh, wow. Okay, here we are. Here are the menu of excursions that they did. The one that I did was this one, the Beso Perhentian. Uh, three stops, three point snorkeling. Uh, it costs 99 ringgit per person. Okay, let's see where it takes us. So, Alunan is here. Um, Long Beach is over there. So that is where all the restaurants are. A lot of cheaper hotels are here. So what we did instead, this is Pulau Perhentian Kecil, Pulau Perhentian Besar. So that's Kecil, that's Besar. And then there's a couple of bunch of smaller islands over here. And this map of that. So the first place that we went to is Serenge. 
I think this is my favorite because of all the biodiversity at one spot. This is my favorite. And then we went to Tokongburu up there. And then the last stop is Pulau Rawa, where we had the picnic. So uh, the water is uh, clearer in these two places, but the corals are a little bit more spread out. Uh, the water is a little bit less clear here in Serenge, but the biodiversity is much, much better. Serenge was my personal favorite snorkeling spot due to all the biodiversity there. Unfortunately, I don't have a GoPro, so I can't show you what I saw there. Maybe I'll consider it for the next trip. After that snorkeling trip, we were all tired, we came back and took some rest. Then we waited for the sunset. This is our last dinner, this is the Alunan chicken. Here we are on the last day, waiting for our ferry back to Kuala Besut Jetty. On our way back, we managed to squeeze in another stop to have some kropot leko. Kropot leko is a fried fish cake. <laughs> and here's how they make those kropot leko. And here's how they fry them. We even managed to swing by Pasar Besar Siti Katija, which is pretty famous for photographers and videographers. But by the time we got there, it was already 4pm and most of the stalls are already closed. But it's still pretty nice to see. We finally got some real coffee in Kota Baru. All right, there you go. That's my little review of the Alunan Resort and how to get to Perhentian Island. Overall, we thoroughly enjoyed our vacation and we spent a total of 3,600 ringgit for this trip for two persons. So the rough breakdown is the Alunan Resort was 600 ringgit a night. So that brings it to 1,800 for three nights. The flights were 350 ringgit round trip per person. So two person that cost adds up to 700 ringgit. The taxi to and from Kota Baru to Kuala Besar Jetty is around 100 ringgit per way. So round trip is around 200 ringgit. And then excursions like the snorkeling trip would be around 100 ringgit per person, which I think is fair. So this all brings the total to 3,600 ringgit. Now this may sound like a lot of money, especially for a Malaysian vacation, but for us, this is our mini honeymoon. We got married during the COVID lockdown. We didn't have a chance to travel uh, outside of Malaysia yet. So we consider this our mini honeymoon. And also, um, ever since I started this blog and YouTube channel, I've been earning money through display ads. So even though the cost of this whole total vacation was 3,006, 1,500 was paid off by my blog and YouTube channel through all the money that I earn from display ads. Pretty cool. So I'm going to leave the link somewhere here if you want to go check out how I earned my first $100 a month through blogging and YouTube. If you like this kind of content, let me know in the comments. I can create more travel and experience videos that I find is worth the money. So if you want to go check out Alunan Resort and also the flight information, I'll leave the link in the description below. So again, I hope you enjoyed the video. See ya.